In 2010, this man, Forrest Fenn, hid a chest filled with gold and rare artifacts somewhere in the Rocky Mountains. The search for this million dollar treasure has obsessed thousands of seekers worldwide. And the trail starts with this poem, which Fenn wrote. It contains nine clues that point to the treasure's location. It's here someplace. Are we rolling? As I have gone alone in there, and with my treasure's bowl, I can keep my secret where, and hint of riches new and old. Fenn's motivation for hiding the treasure was to give hope to those knocked down by the recession and to inspire them to explore the wild. I found a beautiful little Romanesque treasure chest and I started filling it up with, with gold coins and gold nuggets and about 280 rubies. There are two salon sapphires, there are eight emeralds, a bunch of diamonds, but mostly gold. I don't know what it's worth and I don't even want to think about that. You're not going to be disappointed if you find that treasure chest. I'm Cynthia Meacham, and I am a full-time treasure hunter. I have been looking for Finn's treasure now for a little over three and a half years. I hid the treasure chest more than 8.25 miles north of Santa Fe in the Rocky Mountains someplace. Nobody knows but me. The poem that you have to solve, Forrest always said, you have to find where warm waters halt. And to me, this is where our warm waters halt. And that's where I think that we need to find the treasure chest. The thrill of this chase for Fenn's treasure has led many to leave the safety of known trails and well-beaten paths. The mountains are very unforgiving. It's extremely important that you know what you're doing and you know where you're going. You can end up in big trouble really quickly. There's even one hiker that's been lost looking for the treasure and he hasn't been found yet. To Fenn's knowledge, the treasure remains a hidden mystery, but the real reward should come from the hunt. I was positive this was our warm waters halt. And unfortunately, I just, I don't think that this is gonna be the spot. It doesn't matter what state you treasure hunt in, you're gonna have beautiful scenery like this. And it doesn't matter if you find a treasure chest or not, this is finding the treasure right here. So hear me all and listen good. Your effort will be worth the coal. If you are brave and in the wood, I give you title to the gold. When I first started treasure hunting, I would come down to the river pretty much every single day and I'd surf and raft and have a good time at the river. But the first time I went underneath the water, it just opened my eyes to a world I didn't know existed. My name is Jay Kohler. I'm a freediver and treasure hunter. You guys ready? Let's do, I'm ready. It. Let's do it, man. I dive in the Chattahoochee River in Columbus, Georgia, which is one of the world's largest urban whitewater courses ever built. So this is actually Georgia, and the other side of the river is Alabama. Thousands of people go down this river every single year, and they lose all kinds of valuables, and it's a lot of fun to go out there and swim and see if I can find some stuff they lost. Some of the most interesting things I found definitely have to be like iPhones, GoPros, pistols. Always pretty interesting to find like a potential murder weapon out here in a river, but GoPros and phones, definitely my favorite finds. When I find these cameras and phones, I try to just figure out who it belongs to, because not only like finding this stuff is a lot of fun, but giving back the devices that they've lost is also a blast. Here you go, man. Be careful out here. I will. Not only you find a lot of cool stuff that people lose after rafting, but thousands upon thousands of fishermen come up here, and uh, <laughs> normally no one would go out there and collect all these fishing lures, but I go out there and I'll free them from the wall and free them from the stumps, and it just kind of cleans up the area, and I get free fishing lures. 
There's a lot of animals underneath the water. You got a lot of striped bass, shad, uh, spotted bass, and uh, catfish. You see a lot of turtles down here too. It's just super beautiful to see all that stuff. Okay. First day back and Jake finds a GoPro. <laughs> he was diving right next to me. I was really surprised how many people were interested in watching treasure hunting videos. Someone said, hey, hey, <laughs> we got another fan over there, I guess. <laughs> I love coming down here, look for treasure and surfing and having a good time, but I didn't know I can actually do this as like a full-time job. I started my YouTube channel and record myself swimming and having a good time at the river. And one thing led to another, and now I'm able to do this as my full-time job. Oh my God, 24. Oh, it's going quick, more, bro. Oh, Two more. The more I travel, the more I realize that this spot is actually one of a kind. There's not many places in the world that you can actually surf at a river, you know, you could fish and treasure hunt. I have a love for this river, man, and I just can't stay inside. I have to go down and have a good time. <laughs> Gilbert Faku is a farmer. His homeland is remote, near the bottom of Africa. His life, his wealth, is in his farm and the herd of cattle he tends. But what he found in his backyard has brought him on an extraordinary adventure. I during the centuries of European navigation toward the Indian Ocean, ships frequently passed Gilbert's homeland on South Africa's Eastern Cape. One such trip ran aground, leaving countless spoils, and Gilbert is one of the few who knows their location. His finds are varied, usually bits of porcelain and beads, but his most prized possession is what keeps him coming back. And I've been doing a little bounce. That's a black cool. It's a jewel encrusted pendant so valuable, yet he refuses to sell it. Well, for money, that is. Not very many people really know, but the Great Lakes has thousands of shipwrecks. In Wisconsin, for sure, we know we have 750 um, historic shipwreck losses. My name is Caitlin Zant, and I'm a maritime archaeologist with the Wisconsin Historical Society. I would say the main goal of what we do in maritime archaeology is to preserve our maritime history and also the history of the United States in general. The ships are quite sturdy, but they've also been underwater for up to 100, 150 years. Our shipwrecks don't disappear over time like they do in the oceans. The fresh water that's very cold actually does a really good job at preserving these shipwrecks. One of the really great things about Lake Michigan that makes it really unique is the fact that you do have fresh, clear water. You can see many times, especially on deep wrecks, 100 to 150 feet. When you are down there looking at a shipwreck, you start to think of all the sailors that sailed on it, or if it was a passenger ship, the passengers that happened to be on it. You can still find pieces of clothing in certain areas, buttons, shoes, um, and so that really gives insight to the lives of these sailors. There's definitely a, a little bit of a thrill of discovery. Um, when we go down on a ship, even on a ship that we know, we think we know what it is, there's still always that little um, sense of excitement that you're going to find something that no one else has seen before. 